So ladies and gentlemen, there is a new Power BI desktop update. This time it's for November 2022. You asked me to continue to do this summary, so here they are. Let's get started. So small multiples allows you now to unshare the y-axis. And be careful with this feature, okay? It's very useful sometimes to do, but you have to design it very carefully so the user is aware that you are sharing the y-axis. So for example, if you have a case where the y-axis range differs quite a lot between the visuals and you know you get flat lines to unshare it, it's a dangerous practice because if you do, people normally don't read all the y-axis and they might just look at the pictures and believe that everything is equal when it's not. So you have to be very careful. Should this feature be here? Yes, I think sometimes you do want to unshare them, but you have to use this feature with care, okay? And if you do, you have to make sure that the user understands that this y-axis has not been shared across, okay? Two neat updates on Azure Maps. The first one is labels. You know, sometimes you want the labels on the map or the cities or whatever that you're seeing, the counties or whatever it could be, but sometimes you don't, depending on the story that you're telling with that visual. So now you can actually turn them on and off as you need. So this is quite neat. And if you decided to turn them on, you have now the possibility to format them. So you can change the background, you can change the transparency and, you know, all that good stuff. So this is a neat update for Azure Maps. So field parameters have got an update. Now you can have what they call dynamic slicers. And what it is, what they show, for example, on the video is that you can have category, product, and model as one field parameter slicer. And then if you click on product, you can see product models below. So you can just right click on the field and choose show values of selected field. And then you will be able to iterate between them. Okay, so it's like a sync slicer between a hierarchy of levels. And there is a, an update on composite models over Power BI datasets and um, analysis services that says that a single table can now simultaneously filter more than one table in a remote group, source group. So before it was one to one, now it's one to many. When it comes to the modeling side of things, there is a few updates, some of them very neat. So the first one is there is a new optimized ribbon and the optimized ribbon, they have moved the performance analyzer in there. So that's where you will find it now. And there are other functionality for, especially for direct query sources or reports. So what it does, or the main functionality is to be able to stop the visuals from loading while you are making changes. So before while you were making changes, things were sending queries to the source all the time and making it very slow. So now you can stop that, do all the changes and then turn it back on and see the results, okay? So this is quite neat if you're working on direct query models. The next one was supposed to be my favorite. There is a plot twist though. <laughs> so, evaluate and log, so neat. So evaluate and log allows you to see intermediate tables of your DAX queries. And, and I'm as I told you before, I'm learning Python. And one thing that Python allows you to do is, for example, if you're doing a loop, you can actually print the table that is being going to be fed into the loop. You can see it. You can print it and then you see the results of the input table and then you see the loop below. So neat. I mean, for me that I'm a beginner, it's so cool to be able to see things, to see what's being fed. And this is the same thing for DAX. I mean, when I saw it, I was like, oh, how neat, because I'm thinking that I've, I've been so happy using it in Python. So they're like, oh, this is so cool. There's a but, there's a big but. <laughs> and is that you need to install a third party tool to see the evaluation query, to see the intermediate table. And it's like, oh my God, that's not good. Not good for many reasons. There's a lot of people that cannot install anything on their computer. So this is out of their reach, like quite a big amount of, I guess, part of your users that won't be able to use it. Unless it's on, I'm not sure if he's in, installing the, you know, DAX, uh, DAX Studio and all those other tools that maybe people already have access to. But regardless of that, 
I would love to have it implemented as Python does. You, you, when you write, evaluate, and log, it will give you the intermediate table, and then it will give you the results in the visual. And then when you remove that, it will give you just the results. So that would be so useful. If that is too hard, the minimum would be to create a visual, a custom visual or out-of-the-box visual that allows you to see the queries, because otherwise it's just... Oh, I, I'm... I think it, things should be, you should be able to do stuff on Power BI Desktop, like, come on. So uh, I will give it a go. We will test it together, but I'm so bummed that they did it that way. But yeah. So there are actually two more DAX functions this month. One is two CSV and the other one is two JSON. I was a bit confused at first, like, why would you want to convert a table to CSV with DAX? But then, obviously, when you think about it, you know, sometimes when you export things from Power BI, out of Power BI, from the desktop, the format is horrible. I've been spending time, like, you know, you have to spend time cleaning it afterwards because it exports as CSV in a super weird way. So if you actually can export it to CSV already from the get-go, as you specified, or if you need it's JSON and then do something else, it will save you time. So it's definitely neat, absolutely. So yeah, <laughs> cool, cool. It just took me a while to wrap my head around why it was good. One thing that I was thinking, like, what happened with Offset? So I was thinking to do a video when it was released, but it hasn't been released yet. Don't know. Just let me know if you know it's been released. So going to the Power BI service, there is now a new way to import data into Power BI service. So before you had this get file experience from Power BI service, that thing is going to go away very, very soon, I think like next month. So the new experience will allow you to get data from SharePoint, from OneDrive for Business, the OneDrive personal is going to go away. But for those that use OneDrive personal, instead they can use from computer. Okay, so that would be the option for you guys. Uh, otherwise, that's the new experience and it's going to be the default experience very, very soon. So test it and be comfortable with it. Another neat update is that you can now subscribe to a report with filter supply to it. So you open a report and then you say, oh, I want to uh, filter it by my country and my region and my boss, for example, and then get a report of that sent to my email and then you can do that. So you do the filters and then you tick a box and then it will just send it to you every month with that state where you tick the box on. So very, very neat. You don't need to save it anywhere. Link metrics are available on metrics, <laughs> you know, the KPI thing. So uh, linked metrics are now available. Also, you can share a metric on different scorecards. That's basically what it is. And they are, as every month, telling us that the web view 2 is coming. So make sure you install it and make sure you report see if you have any bugs because it's going to be the default experience soon. When it's soon, we don't know, I guess they are still trying to put on board. My, my guess is they can see who has installed it and they see that not enough people has done it. So they, this is just a friendly reminder that do it because it's coming, okay? So this is all for this month. Uh, what was your favorite feature? For me, it would have been evaluate a log if there was the possibility to actually see the queries within Power BI Desktop. Such a bummer that they didn't do that. Uh, but it's still my favorite anyway. <laughs> then let me know which one is your favorite and I will see you again on the next video. Take care.